in the 1950s, the U.S. Air Force was working on innovative ways to extend the aircraft fighter range. As in-flight refueling was still not possible, several experiments were being conducted to push an airplane as far as possible. The threat of nuclear war between the U.S. and the Soviet Union made the need to extend the range of nuclear bombers and smaller aircraft more urgent. The possibility of a bomber squadron being able to carry out an attack against the Soviet Union from the U.S. without stopping along the way would be a game-changer. One of the most radical ideas was to experiment with flying aircraft carriers that could tow escort fighters or any other type of small aircraft directly into battle. This is how the Fighter Conveyor, or FICON, project was born during the early years of the Cold War. Wingtip coupling experiments first evolved from the idea of adding extra floating panels to extend the effective wingspan of a plane in hopes of expanding its range. During World War II, the German Luftwaffe experimented with this idea by coupling two equal-sized planes together. Richard Vogt, a German who migrated to the U.S. after the war, further developed this idea. It eventually became known as Project MX-1018, codenamed Tiptoe. The plan was to extend a fighter plane's range by using a bomber as the tow aircraft. The Republican Aviation Company oversaw developing a means to actually couple the fighters to a bomber. On September 15, 1950, a hookup between a modified Boeing ETB-29A and two EF-84D planes was successful. The fighter aircraft was manually controlled the entire time, from attachment to disconnection from the bomber. However, doing so resulted in extreme pilot fatigue during the hookup process. It required immense concentration. Despite early tastes of success, a tragic incident occurring on April 24, 1953, led to the cancellation of the Tiptoe Project. In the test, an experimental automatic flight control system created for the fighter malfunctioned, causing the F-84 to flip over into the bomber's left wing during the hookup phase. Both planes lost control and plummeted to the ground. Major Bud Anderson, the pilot of the second F-84, was able to pull up from the Boeing ETB-29's left side just before the converted bomber lost control. His craft was the only one to escape the exercise. With wing-mounted transport proven too risky, a new way to carry fighters was explored. The fighter conveyor program was born to test the possibility of a Convair B-36 Peacemaker bomber carrying a Republic YRF-84F Thunder Flash fighter in its bomb bay. The idea of a parasite fighter hidden in the belly of a B-36 intrigued the USAF. The purpose was to carry the fighter internally to extend its operational range and then to deploy it via a lowering boom. It would carry out various tasks such as protecting the bomber itself, executing combat missions, and completing reconnaissance before returning to the B-36 to refuel. For the gigantic B-36, all of the above was possible. The bomber had a weight of 410,000 pounds, with fuel and ordnance included. Besides its massive fuel capacity and storage space, the B-36 had a wingspan of 230 feet, making it one of the largest aircraft of the time. The B-36 used for the FICON project was modified with a trapeze mechanism in its bomb bay. It was redesignated GRB-36F. The parasite fighter was fitted with a retractable hook in the nose in front of the cockpit. With these changes, both aircraft could accomplish the hookup. The hook would link the fighter to the trapeze, holding the EF-84E Thunder jet in the bomb bay during the flight. This trapeze would also be able to deploy the jet for a mission and raise it after returning successfully. The main drawback was that, given the parasitic fighter's size, only the cockpit, the fuselage spine, and the tail fin were able to fit inside the bomber. Although the pilot was able to leave the fighter once he was inside the bomber, this increased the drag and reduced the GRB-36F's range by 10%. In 1953, the bomber and the fighter aircraft performed 170 tests at Eglin Air Force Base. The F-84E Thunderjet was then replaced by the Republic F-84F Thunderstreak, a faster and more agile plane. This would not be the only change in the program. The U.S. Air Force also ordered the FICON project to change its role to solely reconnaissance missions. 
This led to the modifications of an F-84F Thunderstreak prototype to become the RF-84FK Thunder Flash, a slightly smaller recon version of the airframe. This model featured retractable hookup equipment and anhedral tailplanes that fit better inside the bomber. The B-36 bomber was redesignated GRB-36D. It featured clearance doors that streamlined the bomb bay while the fighter was on board. When the parasite was deployed, the plug doors would fill the hole left by its release. FICON was cancelled in January 1956 for various performance-related issues, including a reduction in range and ceiling for the GRB-36D and minimal ground clearance with both aircraft mated. A total of 10 GRB-36Ds and 25 RF-84FKs were built. Although most hookups were successful, they were still a challenge, even for the most veteran pilots. The successful refueling of Thunder Flashes from a Boeing RB-52B in the same month also accelerated the FICON project's cancellation. In the end, the concept of towing fighter planes was replaced by the innovation of mid-air refueling, which significantly increased the operational range of all aircraft. More importantly, this method was cheaper and more practical than using a bomber as an aircraft carrier. One of the few surviving RF-84FKs can be appreciated today at the National Museum of the USAF. <laughs>